Craig, have you got anything more to say about the, how the case is progressing? We're waiting for the decision on whether a cross appeal can take place. What, what's happening there? Yeah, I think that's the important thing to remember, that um, Julian hasn't actually had his appeal against the decision to extradite yet. The, the only appeal that's been held was the American appeal against the points, the health points, essentially, on which it was specifically decided not to extradite. Um, Julian's appeal against extradition is still awaited, and that will shift the courtroom focus back again onto the fundamental questions of human rights and freedom of speech, on the abuses of process in the case, the fact that the American government uh, was spying on Julian's legal conferences, that they obtained all of his legal documents from the uh, Ecuadorian authorities after he was removed from the embassy, on the fact that the uh, extradition treaty under which he's being extradited specifically states there should be no political extradition, on numerous other points of appeal which are yet to be heard. I should be very, very surprised if the High Court doesn't agree to hear uh, that appeal, so we have some time to go. But the problem is, of course, that all this time, Julian is held in, in dreadful conditions in the maximum security prison. So, to some extent, the, the process is for punishment, but the, the process still has a long way to go. Well, this isn't supposed to be a political case, but how likely is it that the, the US or the UK would want some of those matters to be heard in court? Yeah. I think um, it's going to be very difficult to prevent the court. It's very, very hard to see an argument that the that the High Court should not hear um, uh, the appeal. Because plainly there are, there are points of, of appeal on which there are legal principles of quite a high magnitude to be, to be discussed, particularly about the right to confidentiality of, uh, uh, of legal consultation. Um, and, of course, the, the entire principle of the application of the extradition treaty and, and all its provisions... Um, under which the application takes place. The, the UK government's point, viewpoint is that there is nothing in general that prevents the UK government from breaking international law in its domestic law, that, that an international treaty doesn't bind the UK in, in what it does internally. Um, and even if you accept that is true, and I, I mean, it's, it's a very bad thing, but it is true that the British courts have always held that the UK government is not bound by external treaties. Whether that can be said to apply to a treaty which is the operating, uh, which is the, the operating instrument under which extradition is taking place. Um, and it post-dates as well, doesn't it? Wasn't it 2007, the treaty, but the act is earlier? That's true. It, 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 it does indeed. Um, and before... Uh, before that, no political extradition was uh, specifically included in the UK's general uh, extradition legislation. Um, but I, I mean, all, all, all this is bloody nuts. You, you know, Julian is being charged for espionage by, by a country, and he hasn't been near that country either at the time of the offence or since. You know, he's an Australian citizen who's operating outside the United States. So how he can be said to have committed an offence within the United States, uh, <laughs> it, you know, we're, in, in considering the extradition at all, the United Kingdom is admitting an extraordinary United States claim of universal jurisdiction. There, 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 there's so many legal points which, which are just completely wrong uh, in, in this case that it's very hard to believe that the High Court won't hear them. Uh, and I, I personally believe the High Court will hear them. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean we will win. I, 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 mean, I think anybody who believes that in political cases like this, the courts are genuinely independent is extremely naive.